second lesson. First Corinthians chapter 13 verses 12 to 13. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abided faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Love is the greatest of all laws, beloved. As at the time the above statement was made, was love practiced? By then, people were confused because of the prolifer because of the proliferation of prophecies and visions which were used to dupe people. No one ever knew about the essence of love. Love teaches us to be one and equal, therefore shun the habits of oppression and deprivation, for they have no part to play in this kingdom. We are not sincere to one another. At all times we are crafty and deceitful. That is why we are always free to tell God the truth from our hearts. But we conceal such truth from our fellow men for some reasons such as fear and perhaps punishment. It therefore stands to reason that we do not have any iota of love in us. Our life is seasoned with falsehood, with deceit, with craftiness and insincerity. There is no man who has ever done anything wholeheartedly and cheerfully. All your deeds are seasoned with craftiness and all the things you do if critically investigated is for your exclusive benefit at the expense of your fellow man. You all are skeptical over all the things you do and this has gone a long way to reveal that your life is devoid of love. The people of this world are dangerous. Hence, even our Lord Jesus Christ was very skeptical in dealing with them. On this note, he advised thus, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. That was in Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. This is the cause of distrust and circumspection that abound among men today. The monkey's art illustration. There lived a monkey that was in friendship with a certain man. One day, the monkey had a problem and he consulted an oracle. The problem was said to require the heart of a monkey for the solution. Consequently, this man requested his monkey friend to accompany him on the journey, which the monkey obliged. On the appointed day, they left for the journey. And after a long walk, the man told the monkey that they were going to an oracle which he had earlier consulted in respect of his problem, which requires the art of a monkey as solution. On hearing this, the monkey questioned the man as to why he did not tell him the purpose of their journey before they departed from home. As he normally leaves his heart at home before he embarked on any journey, the man was surprised when he heard this and decided to go back home to enable the monkey 
to take his heart along. When they got home, the monkey ran away and left the man disappointed. Another illustration of a tortoise and its craftiness. Once upon a time, there lived a tortoise that had an in-law. The in-law sent some monkeys to the tortoise to help him buy a fowl, which is neither male nor female. On hearing this, the tortoise was confused and as crafty as it was, the tortoise in return sent a message back to the in-law to tell him that the fowl has been bought. He further requested the in-law to send somebody who is neither a man nor a woman to come and fetch the fowl. That is why people said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 12 that For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Truth is without blemish. Beloved, it is this craftiness that has caused confusion in the world today. However, the truth shall emerge in its true perspective. All confusion shall cease and all shall perceive the truth. After all, the truth is without blemish. Besides love, there is no other thing which is capable of eradicating deceits, craftiness, cunning, and distrust from this world. Recall this story in the scripture about Prophet Samson. Samson married his first wife and later divorced her and took up a Philistine, a Philistine and took up a Philistine woman. But since the Philistines were jealous of him because of his braveness, they went and bribed his new wife with money to find out and tell them the source of his power. One day, as Samson was returning from a certain place, he went to embrace his wife as usual. But the wife retorted that Samson was not sincere to her, as he has failed to tell her the source of his power. In reply, Samson told, told her that his power was in his hands. As such, if his two hands were bound, he would be defeated. The woman went and revealed this to the Philistines who tried same, but it did not work. On realizing that what Samson told her was false, she again queried him for being insincere to her. This disturbed Samson a lot. As a result, he told her the secret of his power to be in the hairs on his head, he explained to the wife that one that once his hairs were barbered, this power would disappear immediately. She went and revealed the secret to the Philistines, who paid her a lot of money for that purpose. And as soon as a razor blade was put into Samson's head, his power left him and he was overcome. This has led to the craftiness, the deceit and insincerity amongst couples, amongst parents, amongst children and brethren. Nobody is ready to trust his fellow man and as such, there is no sincerity and faithfulness among men. It is only to the Father alone 
that we are sincere and faithful. This means that you only feel secured when you are with the Father, but with, but with any other man you do not feel secured. Darkness has engulfed the entire world today because none is ready and willing to be faithful and sincere to his fellow man to avoid being trapped. This now reveals why we are often given to falsehood. Everybody and every race in the world are egocentric. Hence, the whites find it very difficult to build the headquarters of their important plans here in Africa. They have only established branch offices in African countries for the purpose of making their money. They do not want the blacks to measure up with them or be like them. That is why they have done everything possible to conceal their technological know-how. The people of this world are self-centered and that is why they are ever ready to grant any of your financial requests than reveal the secret of their wealth to you. That is why many businessmen are always incompatible because they do not want their fellow man to know the secret of their business in order not to venture into it. Consequently, the scripture has asserted that for now, we see things dimly through the mirror. Love is the fulfillment of all the laws and it does not harm. And it does no harm to its neighbor. If there exists two friends who are bound by true and perfect love, they shall not hide their secrets from each other. Emulate the type of love that God has for us. Hence, he makes his reign to fall evenly on everybody in different geographical locations. The blessing he gives to this person, he does the same unto the other person. He loves everybody equally. But such love is not common amongst men. Let the golden text be read again. Golden text, Matthew chapter 5 verses 44. 45. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Beloved, the above text has clearly spelt out the true meaning and connotation of love. Man does not have such love because he is even discriminating, dis divisional and segregational. The people of the world are very crafty. Take an instance from the Roman Catholic Church. Their Pope most of the time comes from Italy. That is why irrespective of how sound, however rich or handsome and worthy another person is, he cannot be appointed a Pope for the Roman Catholic. In the world today, the roads of all Roman Catholic churches lead only to Italy. Their world, their world headquarters. But is that how God normally designs his things? God's interests or emphasis 
on anything is always on the basis of equality. And here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, every person has been told the whole truth. The gifts in our golden text constitutes a take-home package to each of you. With this fact solidly in you, you are on top of the world. Many people out of ignorance regard Brotherhood of the Cross and Star as a worldly fold. But Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is not a worldly fold. That is why we are devoid of all forms of discrimination, of partiality, of division, and deprivation. In Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, you are taught that everybody is equally blessed with the same amount of power. Similarly, you are taught that every Bethel and, Pe and Pentecostal centers are equal to 34 Amber Street Great All in everything. Therefore, oh, wherever you stay to communicate with your God, it is one and the same thing. To this end, any person you approach for prayers or gospels has in store all that the Father has. So, there is no superiority, no division and discrimination in brotherhood. God showers his blessings equally on the Jews and on the Gentiles in the same vein. His blessings on both the new and the old members of this fold are equal. Recall the conversation between John the Baptist and his disciples as contained in John chapter 3 verses 25 to 27. Thus, then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptized, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Equality of all creations. Brethren, from what John's disciples told their master, if John had sought to please the flesh, confusion and perhaps fighting would have busted. Similarly, even if you choose to put on a red garment, the father would not be disturbed because he knows his mission. Do whatever pleases you. Nobody is there to confront you. Our watchword here is, at all times, is equality. When Brother of the Cross and Star was first taken to Abba in Abia State, Senior Apostle Ed Pen Young and one brother, Akwahobo, from physical Eket, and also an ex-member of the Church of Christ who were here, who were there to work for the physical manifestation of this kingdom. But somehow, these two brethren derailed from the mission which the Father commissioned them to go and accomplish and went into occultism because they were money conscious hence all the money that was sent there for God's services were misappropriated. Later I ordered Apostle Ed Pen Young to come back home 
but he refused to take the order serious, but rather requested that I should send enough transport money to convey him and his packages home. I obliged accordingly, but he used the money for other purpose. At the end of it all, both of them established their own churches and did everything possible to convince people to patronize their church at the expense of brotherhood. Upon this, I was not perturbed. I always gave them all the support they needed to function effectively as a separate fold. Whenever their, their holy oil finishes, I always make sure that they were supplied with holy oil for smooth operation. This is the type of lifestyle expected of you. You must emulate the Father in every ramification. The said brother, Aquahowo, used the money to establish Mount Zion Church while Apostle Ekpen Young still opened his separate fold. On a certain day, the latter came to me and I embraced him immensely. Thereafter, he questioned me why the membership of his fold was always declining in strength. By this time, it was his family only that was left as members of his religious fold. Furthermore, he had the effrontery to tell me that his fold was still brought out of the cross and star. I later gave him some words of advice and thereafter he left with the holy oil which I cheerfully gave him. But not quite long after he realized his nakedness and came back to brought out of the cross and started to confess to the father that he had derailed and have accepted to go back to the path of rectitude. So, the father is never perturbed. No matter what you do here in the fold, beloved, have you realized what is meant by love? The phenomenon love does no harm to its neighbor. Everybody is treated equally by God and that is why here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, everybody enjoys the same gestures and treatments. Hence, nobody cautions you irrespective of what you do here in the fold. You should then realize that equality is an unavoidable virtue that must be practiced by all those who anticipate to see the truth in their ways. Beloved, it is said that a stroke of the cane is enough for the wise. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Almighty God has imparted to the entire world. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.